The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus took Peter, James, and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise, and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw, saw no one else but Jesus. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Transfiguration of the Lord. And this particular feast day occurs every year on August 6th. And uh, because it falls on a Sunday, that is the 6th, then the Feast of the Transfiguration um, is uh, celebrated in place of a regular Sunday. And so we have the opportunity, uh, once again, to reflect on this particular incident, this particular moment in the life of Jesus and his apostles, particularly Peter, James, and John, as they ascended, it says, a high mountain. Uh, when I was in the Holy Land, I went to uh, the place where we believe this transfiguration took place. It's on a mountain called Mount Tabor. And uh, from on the top of that mountain, um, you can see forever. And we happen to be there on a very beautiful day with clear skies, and it was really magnificent. Um, on the top of that mountain, there are a couple of churches. There is a uh, Roman Catholic church and there is a Greek Orthodox church uh, located close by. And um, there is a large, uh, I believe what used to be a Franciscan friary, but now is a place used for people who are recovering from drug addiction. It seems really appropriate to me that um, in that particular place, people can go there for uh, healing and recovery. Uh, but anyway, so we, what does this transfiguration event mean? We have this moment where Peter, James, and John travel with Jesus to the top of the mountain. Remember that mountaintops are always a place where people believe they could be closer to God. It was higher up. And so they go to the top of the mountain, and there they experience this kind of vision where Jesus appears in dazzling white robes, and he is accompanied by Moses and Elijah. These Old Testament figures represent the law and the prophets. Moses, of course, representing the law, and Elijah the prophets. And, and so at this moment, symbolically, we could say that uh, what's seen in this vision is Jesus as the fulfillment of all of the Old Testament law and prophets. And the disciples see that. They see this vision. But not only that, Jesus appears in glory. You might say that 
I believe that Peter, James, and John in that moment had a, a, a glimpse of Jesus in all of his heavenly glory. He was, you could say, the resurrected Jesus, not the Jesus who walked with them on those dusty roads of Galilee and Judea, but rather Jesus in all of his glory. And why? Why did these apostles have this opportunity to see Jesus in glory like this, accompanied by Moses and Elijah? Why? We should remember that this particular biblical event took place just before Jesus and the apostles traveled to Jerusalem, and then Jesus was ultimately there, arrested and punished. He was scourged at the pillar. He was, um, he was forced to suffer the indignity of carrying the cross. He was nailed to the cross and died on the cross, and he was placed in a tomb. Of course, we believe he was also resurrected from the dead, something we celebrate on Easter Sunday. But the apostles uh, maybe didn't have a full understanding of what was to come. They went to Jerusalem, and can you imagine what it was like for them to uh, see their teacher, their master, he who they believed was the Messiah? Can you imagine what it was like for them to experience the arrest, crucifixion, and death of Jesus? It must have been extremely difficult. Maybe they had doubts. Maybe they wanted to run away. Maybe they thought um, they were deceived or something. I'm sure that they had moments of great anxiety and doubt and um, trauma even as they went through those uh, Passion Tide experiences. And so this event of the Transfiguration takes place just before that, just prior to those events that happened in Jerusalem not too long in the future. And so I think that they were given this opportunity to see Jesus in his glory, to have this vision as a kind of glimpse into future glory, but also perhaps to give them some kind of uh, perspective of a future glory, um, an eternal hope, um, something that maybe gave them uh, reason to not despair in those most dark moments um, in Jerusalem. Jesus gave them this blessing uh, where he enabled them to know and to see Jesus in all of his glory. It's interesting to note that in this particular event, this voice comes from heaven, the voice of God the Father, and he says to them, this is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Listen to him. In other words, trust what he has told you, trust that he has guided you, trust that Jesus will not let you down. Listen to him, God the Father says. And um, it also is interesting in this passage where as they come down from the mountain, Jesus says, do not tell this vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. They are to share this event, the experience of the transfiguration, after Jesus has risen from the dead. I think that um, as they glimpsed into future glory um, in the transfiguration event, in a way, we do the same every single time we come to celebrate the Mass. You see, the, the Eucharist is the body of Christ. It's the blood of Christ. We say, we believe. Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ and that you are present, body, soul, and divinity in 
the Blessed Sacrament. This Eucharist that we see on this altar is the resurrected Jesus. This is Jesus in all of his glory. And so when we gaze upon the most blessed sacrament, we, in a way, have the very same opportunity as Peter, James, and John did at the top of that mountain to glimpse into heavenly glory, into our own future glory. Jesus gives himself to us he promises us in the Eucharist to give us life. He promises to give us eternal life. And he also promises to be with us even in the most difficult moments. Jesus is always with us. And the transfigured Jesus, the Jesus who is, appears in all of his glory, is with us. Jesus promises to us, like he promised Peter, James, and John and his followers, that even in the darkest moments, even in those Jerusalem moments when Jesus embraces the cross, that there is something beyond the present struggle, something beyond the confusion of the moment. And so as we approach this Eucharist today, let us be grateful for the transfigured Jesus, Jesus in all of his glory, Jesus who gives to us his very life, the very life of God, the fullness of grace. This is what we receive. And as those apostles glimpsed into future glory, so do we. Let's encourage one another with this message of faith and happy feast of the transfiguration. God bless you.